Hello Art Stars, welcome back to another online term. This time around we are going to be doing another session on 3D effects and illusions and I thought it'd be fun to tackle a bit of lettering this time. And I often find that um, lettering can be a little bit intimidating. So I thought I'd break it down for you. And the best piece of advice that I ever got when it came to doing letters that I wasn't very familiar with was to look at it not like a letter, but like a picture. And so you break it down the same way you would, um, say your last session you just had, your, um, your still life, you're observing where items have shapes and how the shadows and the lights fall on it. So we're going to be using that exact same logic, but with words. We're going to be using our pencil and um, rubber as usual. And then I'm really excited. We're going to be using our alcohol pens. Um, and I know a couple of you had asked to have a bit of fun with alcohol pens. So I'm glad that we get to do that together today. So I've got a little PDF of reference for you to help you out. If you get stuck with some letters, you can always pull this out and use it as reference and copy it as a picture. But I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch as well. And we're going to start with bubble letters. And I don't know if any of you are fans of graffiti. This is a very popular style of letter with graffiti artists and it's just a really fun way of writing out words. So let's start with our bubble letters. And I'm gonna do a very um, strong line but I want you all to do your lightest touch because we're gonna um, rub out these reference lines eventually. So I'm going to go ahead and write hi. So I'm going to do my H. Nice and big. And then you want to make sure that you're leaving a bit of space between your letters so that we can expand and make them thicker. So let's do our I about here. Okay, very simple. So now what you're going to imagine is if this line got thicker and thicker and like a balloon that you're blowing up, it's going to become thicker and round at every corner. So I'm going to start at the top of my H here and I'm going to go around it and then again in round shapes and where I'm getting near to where my next line has its thickness I stop and start the new line so this would go around and around and we stop here round again and stop and round again. And now, if you start imagining that this line is not here, you can start seeing the beginning of our bubble shape. So let's do our eye. And this little dot, I'm going to go ahead and make a bit bigger too. There we go, hi. That was easy, wasn't it? Now you can play with as long words as you like, but to keep our examples short and sweet, I'm gonna do uh, just hi. So now that I've got my original um, 
my, my full out shape, I'm going to go ahead and rub out my original lines. And we are ready to go on to our color for this word. Now I'm going to pick out a couple of colors, maybe this pink and let's see this yellow. Yeah, those are nice cherry colors. Now, a couple of things when working with alcohol pens they tend to bleed through quite a lot and I think your notebooks should be thick enough um, to absorb a lot of that um, ink but I always like to stack a few scrap pieces of paper underneath that way they can absorb and you can do the same thing with your notebooks you can grab a couple of pieces of scrap paper and slide them just underneath um, your paper the page that you're working on or you can let some of the bleeding come through to the next page and you can use it as your starting point for um, an abstract picture. So trying to find shapes within the little splodges of ink that have come through and maybe have a bit of fun connecting dots and shapes together. So two options of um, things you can do with the, I guess the effects of using something like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this spare paper here and put my word aside just so we can get familiar. If you've never used alcohol pens before, they're one of my favorite things to use. Um, I think I've mentioned to you before that I come from a fashion and textiles background. And so we mainly used these to um, do all of our illustrations. And I just, I love the way they behave. It's a bit similar to watercolors. You're going to be building from light shades to dark. Um, and there's a couple of different um, things you should know. You should be working fast with um, your alcohol pen if you don't want any um, streaky lines. So what do I mean by that? You grab your marker and um, say <clears throat> I've got a round shape here you start on one corner and you want to move very fast across not stopping and that is going to minimize the amount of streak And can you see how the color's just kind of bleeding into itself? Now, while it's still a bit wet, you can do very soft shading. So I could come back here and kind of try and work it very fast. And this is at the limit. And you can see here that this line is starting to look a bit sharp. This is because this has gone dry. So when you want to do very sharp shadows, you wait for it to get nice and dry. Let the color sort of do its thing. Let the alcohol evaporate from the page. And you can see as this is drying, this is getting a bit of a softer shade. So I'm going to come on this side and do a really sharp shade and I'm just going to come and there we go and then I can build that color up as it um, it dries up so do another pass on top and the color gets a little bit darker. 
Now that this shade's starting to dry out, can you see how this is nice and soft and this is a lot more pronounced? So there's a lot of fun to be had with um, your shading when you're working on these. Another thing to keep in mind is that they bleed. So what that means, it's that the ink kind of travels a little bit. So when you're trying to have a really clean line, always go a little bit before your line, especially when you're doing areas that you're going to go over and over again. Because as you can see here, I've got a little bit of bleed here and a little bit of bleed happening here. And you can always come in and tidy that up with um, a fine liner or a darker color. Um, just uh, depending on what shape of markers you have, there's a lot of different types. Some have a very thick um, streaky line like this. Some are a little bit finer like this. Um, and some have brush tips. So just get familiar with your markers, take a scrap piece of paper and do a few different squiggles. Now that this is getting a bit drier again, I'm going to do one final pass so that you can see with one single color, I'm getting a lot of tones, a different tones around this. And there you go. So with that in mind, we're going to grab our bubble letters again. And can you see here, I've got a bit of the bleed through. And obviously, the more passes you do, the, the, the darker you're trying to get your tone, the more bleed through you're going to get through. And something else you can do on your scrap piece of paper. I've done it before here with different um, markers when I've had uh, different projects, I go ahead and try out ones that I think I'm going to like and just let them dry and see what they look like. And then you can try and um, mix tones. So doing two colors and seeing what happens. Okay, let's go back to our bubble letters. So using that logic, like we said, of the still life, you want to think about the roundness of this shape. And so the light is going to hit sort of in the middle where our um, guidelines used to sit. That's where your highlights would be. And the shadows are going to be around the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my pink. Lovely. And so now I'm going to start building up my shadow, going around the edges. And you can slow down a little bit more for this one. Just following the edge. <clears throat> and you can see I'm getting a bit of bleed already and that's okay. It's part of what happens with this. That's why it's good to try and go a little bit far away from your edge. And very, very slowly, you're seeing a little bit of difference of highlight and shadow. We're going to let this dry a little bit and go for our eye. Let's do the eye and the yellow. You can experiment and try and leave a little sliver of white space. And we're going to do the same with a dot. Try and leave just a little dash of white. You might 
also want to grab yourself either a white crayon, a pencil crayon or wax crayon. I didn't have white, so I grabbed a very light line color. And you can always come back on top to create a few highlights. So we're going to do this on the H. I'm going to try with a line, I think. Let's see what happens. Maybe I layer them. I'm going to do a bit of that and a bit of white. White is the best you can use because it's really going to give you that idea of a highlight. And you want to move in like in a slightly circular line with your highlight to follow that idea of, of the balloon. If you ever look at how light hits a balloon, there's always a slightly streaky circular shape. And so then maybe we would have a little bit here like that on the H. And then like so on the other side here, our other stick. I'm going to grab my pink again and go over the edges one more time. And you're going to see that this time the shadows are a lot more pronounced. So what I might do is go just on one profile as if you had the shadow casting. Um, so here maybe it would start underneath here and fade towards that side and we have one more coming here and here and that is starting to look a lot more 3d and a lot more like a balloon floating away Let's go back into our eye and do the same. There we go. At this point, once your alcohol is nice and dry, this is a tiny bit on the wet side still, but um, you can take your rubber and just get rid of the harshness of some of that line so that it blends more into the color. Of course, you've done it with a lot lighter touch, so yours should just disappear. Mine are hanging around a little bit because I've um, come in to make it nice and, nice and visible. And so now we've got a nice bit of shadow going within our shape. But to make it truly a 3D illusion, you need a bit of shadow outside of the shape and what the shadow that it's casting. So I'm going to try and find myself a nice gray. Let's see this one. Mm, that might be slightly dark. Let's see if I have something a little bit lighter. Maybe this icy blue. Yeah, we're going to make our shadow a nice pop blue color. So logically, if my light is coming from here, highlighting this and making a shadow over here, the shadows of the letter would come this way. So what we're going to do is a little closed shade here, very close to the letter. And same on this side here. And same on the eye. Just very little. 
little shadows. And then we're going to pretend it's kind of swaying this way. So if you took the bottom of these letters and they went this way, let that dry a little bit. And then if you find like mine that your first little shadow is starting to get a bit lost, we can come in and mark that a little bit again. Because the shadow is almost the opposite of the letter. So in the letter, the center is shiny and the shadows are towards the edge. In the shadow, it's going to be lighter towards the edges and darker towards the center. And there we go. You've got a nice bubbly, floaty, 3D high in bubble letters. Now, the second style that we're going to explore is block letters. And so with block letters, you want to think of boxes, right? The six um, faces of, of a box. So you've got the four sides and then the top and the bottom. And so think of your layer, your um, letters as the top and the bottom of the box. So, we're gonna start the same way we did our high here. We're gonna do our high in box letters. So our H, and our I. Lovely just the same way as we started. So this one, because it's a box and not a, a rounded shape, we're going to expand it but with very straight angles and lines. So we're going to do a straight line here, straight down, straight down, up, across, Straight, across, up, across, trying very hard to make everything more or less the same thickness. And this is excellent practice for your um, eye and, and noticing where to stop, where to go, the muscle memory. Very good practice. The eye and then the dot for your eye, you could choose to make it either a circle or a square. I'm going to make it a square just to make it fun and different to the last letters. There we go. And now, if this were the top of the box, you're going to make another set of the same letters sort of at, at an angle. The same way we've treated our um, shadows coming this way, we're going to make them go on, on diagonal. So a little bit to the side, a little bit down. So what I mean by that is, and you can <clears throat> use your middle H reference here as a starting point. So from here, we're going to go out and across, down, and across. Uh, let's see. Yep. Let me rub. I went a little bit too far there. Then out, down, across, up. Oh, we 
always trying to leave the same amount of thicknesses and gaps between everything. So, down, across, and up. And so, I know it looks confusing because there's a few extra lines crossing here, but can you already see that 3D effect happening once you've got similar thicknesses coming in? One H and the second H. Let's do the same with our eye. And maybe this one's a bit less confusing to look at. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start joining the corners with, um, with lines. So I'm going to start at the top here. Let me see if you can see properly. And I'm going to do one line from this corner to this corner. Then my next corner is here. So I do a line from that corner to the other edge. Then my following is there. Every time you see a corner, you stop and you find the, the corner that pairs it. My next corner is here. Then here, and you can notice I'm always going in the same diagonal line. And that way, you've got a three-dimensional H. Oh, I'm missing one corner here, and that's why it looks a bit funny. There we go. That's my box H. Let's do the I as well. And we start the same way, by filling out our shape. And make this nice and dark. So several passes to make it darker. Here. And our bottom here. And the references that I left you to build box letters kind of skip the um, drawing both H's and show you how to create all the diagonal lines straight away. So if you feel like doing the double H is a bit too confusing, go ahead and um, look at those references. You can play around with making, actually we can do that now, I'm going to show you, making these darker lines a completely different color. You can also have fun with that. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when I layer it. So let's grab the pink and layer it on top of our shadows. And you kind of get one color pushing out the other. So whatever color you always do on top is going to mix in a little bit with the previous color. You can tell my pink here doesn't look the same as my pink here, but it's going to push a bit of the blue down and make it bleed to the page below or the thickness of the paper underneath and, um, and dominate. So you wouldn't get a, a straight up purple, you get a purple that is very pink. So um, have a bit of fun with that. Experiment. Oh, whoops, I've made a big mistake here. I wasn't supposed to color that side, but that's okay. I got distracted while I was talking to you guys. 
there we go you've got a block letter h i hi um now what is this missing this is missing the shadow reflection of it as well right so since it's about making this look a little bit three-dimensional always making it a little bit more difficult we're gonna pretend that this high is on a wall and the shadow is gonna hit the floor so what you're gonna do is um, you want to bring the shadows straight down until this horizontal line that we've drawn here and when it hits this horizontal line they're going to start skewing to one side so let's see if this works out i think i'm going to bring my line a little bit up just so that we have enough um of the letters coming through to the floor so it's coming straight down straight down okay one two three and now you start thinking of this as if it were um, a reflection on water so you're gonna mirror it right you're gonna think that there's a mirror sitting here and <clears throat> it goes about this much let's see yeah and we hit our H. So let's draw all our H bits here and our I. Our I goes up to like here. So our shadow maybe comes this way. And our square dot. Now our H goes beyond our dot so this line is going to go all the way up here this is going to come this way and you just keep everything trying to go boop on a diagonal right can you see how it's elongating going this way? So straight down and then everything sideways. You can twist your paper your, or your notebook a little bit if it helps you to keep those, um, those straight. Once you've got your first diagonal line, make sure that is straight to what you're drawing. And it's sometimes easier than if you've got it um at an angle i don't mind i've i've been doing these for a while so i like doing it at an angle but it's another um way to do it if, if you're finding it a bit challenging so there we go we've got our nice shadow and now we can fill it up and remembering that the closer it is to our object the darker it's going to be so we go ahead and fill all of it out trying to move slightly fast and you can see i like sometimes going from one side to the other and sometimes going around the edges and then filling in the middle depending on what shape you're doing you know you can experiment a little bit and see what you find easiest so now i'm going to come back to this top bit and try to make the bit on the wall to where the line hits a bit darker so again i try to stay away from um the black marker because it's so overwhelming that it can take over sometimes so when you want to do something super dark, I always use the dark gray. And we're going to do one more.
And there we go. That is our high casting a shadow, almost like you would have a um, Hollywood sign or, you know, one of those big boxy cutouts. Let's see what other uh, ways you can think of using optical illusions with your lettering. You can start it big and make it go small. You can make it feel like you're looking at it from above. Have lots of fun. Um, you can incorporate some of the optical illusions from our previous video and try and mix them with lettering. So I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Bye, art stars.